1,000th game here at Notre Dame. One. Before you guys were born. 1,000 games. When you started what year? 79. Skip, 1,000 games. Notre Dame That's versus great. Connecticut, January 14th, 2012. Thanks for all That's you pretty do. pretty cool. Thank you. Thank you. It took Skip Meyer 33 years to reach the 1,000 game plateau, starting with the 1979-80 season, a season he remembers with a framed media guide cover above his desk in the Joy Center. The 1,000 games is a milestone only a select few NCAA head coaches have reached in their careers, and a milestone that some Irish players find difficult to comprehend. It says the guy's a dinosaur, man. I mean, 1,000 games, I tried to do the math in my head, and that, that's, that's, a lot, that's a long time. It's hard to even, you know, kind of comprehend what it means to be here for 1,000 games. You know, it seems like I've been here forever, and it's, you know, somewhere in the hundreds, and for him to be here that long just shows, you know, how successful he's been here and how consistent and um, just what he's meant to this program. It just means you're old and, and been, you've been here for a while. That's all it is. It's, it's uh, another game and, you know, you look back and say, you know, if you're doing 20 games a year, that's a lot of years and the years just added up and here we are. Skip, like most athletic trainers across the country, is satisfied to remain behind the scenes and focus on his duties. But the Irish players and coaching staff have never overlooked Skip's contributions to the Notre Dame program. Trainer and the guy handling your players in the training room is a key part. You, you want to make sure that communication, he knows when to come find me to talk about injuries and he knows when to stay away from me. Uh, he, he's a pro. He's just really a pro. And he knows how to talk to our guys. You know, there's many times there's guys that maybe don't feel they can practice and 30 minutes in the training room, he's got them practicing. And I don't even know about that. He gets it done. Skip's meant a lot to me. Uh, you know, Skip was the guy in there every day with me during rehab, telling me what to do, getting me through it, and, you know, taking me to surgery, taking me to doctor's appointments. So uh, Skip's definitely meant a lot for me and my recovery. Yep, Skip's definitely, he's, done, he's gone above and beyond for me, uh, for sure. Uh, when I first came here, I wasn't planning to really get to know him and I'm best friends with the guy now. And that just the things that the doctor's appointments he's gotten me and the procedures that we've had done, uh, he's been a huge part of my career. Skip also brings a signature personality to his role. Some have even referred to the veteran trainer as the team's resident psychologist. You know, he's kind of in the middle of everything, um, you know, both with the coaches and with the team. And, um, you know, he knows the right thing to say. and. Uh, one's, he knows when to poke fun at guys and, and when to lay off and, and be encouraging. So uh, he's, he's definitely a little bit of the psychologist for us. You know, taking care of our guys as the trainer goes more than just physically. You know, he has a great way as a veteran trainer of working on them psychologically when they're injured, working on them when they're just getting in, getting treatment, and, and is, a, is a great resource, just like an assistant coach on giving feedback to me on how to handle someone or the tone of our group. You know, Skip is great at that. An athletic trainer is a lot more than just taping ankles. Uh, it's rehab, it, it's uh, preventing injuries, and uh, it's the, the quick first aid to, to enable the person to get back as soon as possible. Uh, being Spending so much time with them, you get to know their psyche, you get to know their family, get to know their strengths, get to know their weaknesses, and uh, at the quiet times when, when you're alone with someone, they really let down their guard and uh, you can really get to learn and know the person. 1,000 games at Notre Dame, uh, you know, is, is a great honor for him. It just shows an unbelievable consistency of a guy who cares and does it. And many of our former players, when they come back, they'll come by the basketball office and then they go right to the training room to check in on Skip. So it tells you the relationships that have been developed over time. 
yeah, I don't think of it as, as a job. I think it's, it's a journey, taking someone as a freshman, working with them for four or maybe five years, and watching their progress, see how they develop, see how they mature, uh, see what, how they evolve into from being a, a, a young adult to a little bit more mature, mature adult. headed to New York East Village and we're getting ready to go to dinner with the team, team outing. We're playing Seton Hall tomorrow. So are you excited about going into New York? You love New York, right? Yeah. What are you excited about seeing? Uh, Blue Man Group. Thanks, Courtesy Dad. of the Monogram Club. So we really pre Monogram appreciate Club. you guys taking care of us, especially um, every, time we go, every time we go on a trip, we always yeah. try to find somewhere fun to go. So we're really excited about uh, being to, able to go up into New York. Um, I'm going to see my best friend, Jaden, um, Julie Henderson, former player, Irish player. She's going to meet us there. She's got some words for the post players. Um, but we're really excited to go back into New York. It's so much fun, so much shopping, so many people, so busy. But the Blue Man Group, we're really looking forward to that. Very excited. Never been there. That's what happens when you come to Notre Dame. Yep. Every time you go somewhere, you're going somewhere fun. <laughs> we went to Luzo's restaurant, which is an Italian restaurant. Um, and met with a lot of alumni from the Monogram Club, and it was really, really great experience. They talked to us about um, recruiting and networking and all that type of stuff, which is really valuable for us, especially as student athletes. And then we got to the fun part, which was the Blue Man Group. It was started about eight o'clock. It was great. It was sold out. So it was just a lot of fun, and I'm just really fortunate for the Monogram Club for letting us have the opportunity. Growing up in Minnesota, this is all we did, playing outside on the pond. And, you know, it's fun to, for the fans to come outside and see us in a, a different element. Uh, you know, we can come off the ice and take our helmets off and get to know them. I mean, it's awesome. I mean, uh, guys grow up playing on the pond and stuff like that. And uh, she takes them out here and brings back uh, great memories for a lot of us. And uh, it's great uh, to kind of have some fun and relax a little bit. You know, I, I, part of it is, you know, when we first started this, this was a little bit about just, you know, getting away from the routine of practice and letting them have some fun and it turned into a lot more than that now that our fans can be a part of it and get a lot of the local kids in the community to come out and you know, our guys enjoy not just out there playing but just the fact that they can uh, interact with the fans and a lot of the young kids that practice and play out here on a regular basis.